I'm Sue from Sue Pellin Designs. Today I'd like to show you another great use of our Leaves Galore templates. We have Leaves Galore templates in three different sizes and each one of the sizes has two different curves. This size that we're going to be using today is the Grand Leaves Galore template and it has an 8 inch and a 4 inch curve. This pillow box that we're going to make has the 4 inch curve on the flap on the end and this larger box has the 8 inch curve. So we're going to be, be able to make both of these pillow boxes with just that one large Leaves Galore tool. Now we can make pillow boxes in all different sizes and we can make them for all different occasions. Um, if you have the full set of Leaves Galore tools, you can make them from these very small little boxes which would be perfect for a set of earrings or a piece of jewelry. And this one is wonderful for a gift card. And then this larger one would be great for um, a scarf or a pair of gloves. Now you'll notice that depending on which paper or fabric I choose, I can make pillow boxes that are perfect for the holidays, but also for any occasion. So I just love these florals that are perfect for um, a birthday, an anniversary, or any other occasion. So let me show you how to open up this box now we did put a ribbon on this one just to make it look festive for the holidays, but I'm going to take that ribbon off and just unfold that um, oval shape on the end and pull out the gift that's inside. Now we made this box in a beautiful floral Christmas print that matches the present inside. So what better way to wrap up a gift than using the fabric that you made uh, your gift with? So this table runner for the holidays was made using our uh, Leaves Galore pattern. This is the Flowers Galore placemat pattern and it also includes instructions inside for the table runner. So the table runner was inside. We used the same um, line of fabric to make the, this beautiful pillow box. So on our website, we're going to give you instructions for one size of the pillow box. And the size that we're going to be making today or demonstrating today is made with the four inch side of our ground tool. Now I've assembled all the supplies that we need to make our pillow style box. You can make your box out of paper. This is a paper that comes from the scrapbooking store and it has a nice weight to it. So if you score this paper, you can bend it, but it also can hold up. It's not just a typing weight paper. We can also make the project out of fabric. Now I have two different fabrics here, the inside and the outside of the box. Now I've put fusible web on the back of my fabric. If you're not familiar with fusible web, you can watch um, a video that I have on YouTube putting Misty Fuse on your fabric. This is the Misty Fuse product that I used and we just ironed this fusible web product to the back of our fabric using an applique pressing sheet and a hot iron. Now I've done that already, so we now have two fabrics and both of them are fused on the back side. So my fabric size is 10 inches by 9 inches. My paper size is 9 inches square. You will also need a bonding agent like Fabri-Tac if you're making a fabric box. If you're making a paper box, any glue that works well with paper will work. For the fabric box, it's helpful to have these clips so that when we do fold our box and glue it together, the clips will hold that glue in place until it dries. Now I'm using a 28 millimeter rotary cutter and my Leaves Galore template to cut the curved edges of the box. We're going, going to be using the four inch side of my large Leaves Galore template with that 28 millimeter rotary cutter. So let's get started. If you're using fabric for your box, you're going to fuse both pieces of fabric, put those fabrics right sides together, and you're going to cut a piece of decor bond, which is a stiffener that you can get at your local fabric store. Now that I have the nine inch square of decor bond centered on the 10 inch piece of fabric, I'll have a half inch seam on both sides that I now need to sew on my sewing machine. If you are working with paper only, then you're going to cut your square of paper 
9 inches by 9 inches. No seam allowance needed for this one. Now we have the fabrics placed right sides together, the fusible on the back, and the decor bond centered on the piece of fabric. So there's a half an inch um, of fabric beyond the edge of the decor bond. I'll start sewing right along the edge of that stiffener, not piercing the stiffener with our needle. We're actually going to be taking the stiffener right off. It's just giving us a line to sew along. Okay, I'm going to cut our thread and turn it around to do the opposite side. So now that I've sewn a half an inch seam on either side of my fabric, I can turn that fabric right side out. I do like to just um, bring the seam over a little bit and make sure the seam is all going in one direction and then use your fingernail to press that seam. And the same thing on the other side. Just use your fingernail to make sure that seam is going to lie nice and flat with all of the seam allowances going in this direction. Then you're gonna hold it out flat and insert your decor bond. Now decor bond is one brand name from one company. Many different companies make a stiffener that will go inside uh, your project. So you're going to find a stiffener that feels um, fairly stiff like this one. You will find all different weights of stabilizer at your fabric store and you really want one of the heaviest weight stabilizers. What you saw me doing there was bringing my seam allowances all to the back side of the decor bond. And if you make sure you do that on both sides, it will look much nicer and your seam will lay right flat against the edge of that stiffener. We're going to iron the fabric now to the stiffener. Remember, we put the fusible on the back side of the fabric before we sewed it. So we're not only fusing the fabric, but we're also fusing those seam allowances down to the decor bond. Now that we have the seam allowances turned under and they're on the inside, we're going to be marking where we're gonna place our fold lines to make our box. So keeping the seam on this side, we're going to use a ruler and place our one inch marking of the ruler right along the edge of the fabric. Now I'm marking this with an iron erasable chalk marker. This is our iron erasable chalk that we sell on our website. We also have the chalk markers on the website. If you don't have an iron erasable chalk marker, you can also use a friction marking pen. And these pens are also available on our website or at your local office supply store. Uh, the pen will go away when you iron your project. From the one inch line, we're then going to measure five inches away from our edge. So we have our one inch line and now four inches away, we're marking another line. So I have the five inch marking of the tool right along the um, seam that we have created. And we're going to mark a line four inches away. So now we have one inch, four inches, and another four inches. So now we have our flap that's going to fold down and be glued, and then we have two four inch sections. Within those four inch sections, we need to draw two four inch curves. So we're gonna place our tool with the straight line and this four inch curve matched up with the chalk lines that we've already drawn. And we're going to draw this curve from one inch line down and all the way around, just like so. Then we're going to use our tool and slide it up by one full four inch leaf shape. 
once again using the cross markings to make sure that we're straight with what we've marked before. Now we're going to use that chalk to mark again. So we end up with a leaf shape here and a leaf shape here. Let's do that again on the opposite side. So using the straight lines on the ruler, lay those straight lines right across, making sure that this four inch leaf or melon shape fits right along the edge of the fabric. We're going to mark the outside curve and the inside curve, and then we're gonna slide our tool up by one full leaf shape. If you already have my tools and you use them for quilting, you will notice that this leaf shape that I'm marking is also the leaf shape that I cut with my rotary cutter. And when I'm making a quilt, like the one that was behind us at the beginning of this segment, I used all these four inch leaves as my applique pieces for that quilt. So the Leaves Galore tool is useful not only to make these pillow boxes, but it's also very useful for making applique shapes for quilting. Now that we have our curved and our straight lines marked on the fabric, we're going to be sewing along the straight lines and along the inside curves with a straight stitch on our sewing machine. This straight stitch will allow us to fold the fabric. It's a little bit like with the paper, you can score your fabric on those lines. continue with the second straight line. Do your best to follow that line accurately. And now that we've done the two straight lines, we're going to go along the inside curved line. Now do this very slowly and carefully. You can back stitch at the beginning and at the end of your inside line to make sure that those stitches do not come undone. Now as you're stitching, you may need to lift your presser foot and just do a few stitches at a time to follow that curved line. Now when you're coming up to the point, you're going to keep your needle in the down position. Do you see my needle is down here, right where those two leaf ends come together. Now I'm lifting up my foot and pivoting to continue along the curved line that goes to the inside of our project. We don't need to stitch the outside line. That outside line is going to become our cutting line. Now on this one, I'll just go off the edge a little bit over the point and back stitch and forward stitch again before I cut my thread. And let's go ahead and do the second side. So now we have stitched on our straight lines and on our curved lines. Now we need to cut the outside curve for our box. Cutting the outside curve is easiest to do when the box is folded. In order to cut the end of this box, we're going to line up a straight line on the fold so that our melon shape is a complete four inch shape that fits on this side of the box. Over here, we're going to cut beyond that four inch leaf shape, continue cutting into that flap. Now we need a very sharp blade to cut through this many layers of fabric and fusible. We might need to go over it carefully again to make sure 
we've cut through all the layers. There we are. Now that we have the rounded edges of our pillow box cut, we need to finish those edges with our stitching. When we're stitching the curved edge of our box, we're going to be using a zigzag stitch on our sewing machine, and the zigzag will be set at two and a half from side to side, and 0.3 going forward. So your stitches are going to be very tightly spaced going forward, and that will enclose the raw edges of your fabric and your stiffener. When your needle is on the outside or to the right, you're going to be off the edge of your fabric. When the needle swings over to the left, it's going to take a bite out of that fabric, creating a nice stacked stitch along the edge of your fabric. So I'm going to hold my threads to get started, and you can see how the stitches are very, very close together, creating a pretty finished edge on your box. You can go very slowly as you stitch these edges, or go just a bit faster. Making sure that the needle is always on the outside of your work when it goes over to the right. If your needle is stitching on your work, you won't have a finished edge. So the needle should not be off the edge by a large amount, because that will make your stitching very narrow. You want the needle to just graze the edge of the fabric, to just go outside the edge of the fabric. Now continue stitching until you get right to the inside point. When your needle swings to the right, it should still be off the fabric in that crease or in that V between the two outside curves. I put my needle down and then I position, the needle is positioned on the outside of my fabric. With my needle down and my presser foot up, I can pivot around that corner and continue stitching. Because the stitches are so close together, it does take a little bit of time to get around these outside curves. I will only do one of the curves for you. Then I'll complete the second one and show you what it looks like when I'm done. Now this is a wonderful time to experiment with thread. We are using a thread that matches the outside of the pillow box, so we're using red thread. If you have a multicolor box, you can use a multicolor variegated thread, which looks just beautiful. When you come up to the point, go very slowly, and you may just want to back tack for a few stitches to secure your thread and cut close. There we are. Now we have a finished edge on our pillow box. I'll go ahead and sew the second side, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Our edges are all finished on both sides of our box. Now we just need to fold our box, fold this flap down, and secure it in place with glue. Now to make the paper version of this box, we're going to complete those same steps again, but we don't need to do our stitching. We're going to take the nine inch square piece of paper and we're going to use a tool. I like to use a hero mar marker, or this is an Appliquick tool. You can even use the rounded side of a butter knife to score that paper. So we're scoring one inch in from the edge, and then we're going to move our paper to the five inch line. 
So the edge of the paper is now on the five inch line. We'll score again. And now we have the lines that we can fold on. Unlike the fabric, we don't need to sew on that paper to fold those edges in. We can fold both edges in or you can leave the flap open. Now once again, we're going to use our 28 millimeter rotary cutter and our four inch tool laying the straight line at the end of our curve, our four inch curve, right along the edge of the paper. This is much easier to cut through the paper, as you can see. Now that we've cut the two ends of our, uh, the two edges of our pillow box, we're going to go back in, lay the tool over that cut end with this straight line right on our fold. So you're matching up the outside curve and now we're going to score on the inside curve. Oh, we need to do that over here as well. So we're going to pull the tool down to match the curves here. And there's a dash line here that we can match up with our cut edge. Then we're going to score here as well. Now the fabric version and our paper version are at the same point. We need to be able to fold on this stitching line in order to fold our box up. So both with the paper and with the fabric, we have to work at that a little bit to push this fold line together. We're gonna work at it and make sure we can fold right on the fold line. So I'm using my fingernail to follow the fold line and then pushing that excess paper in as I go. Now we're going to fold up the edges of our fabric and fold the flap down and using the fabric tack fabric glue we're going to place a bead of glue close to the edge of our fabric covering most of the one inch flap. We don't want excess glue to find its way to the front of the fabric. So we're going to make that bead fairly thin. Once we folded that flap down and in place, we'll use the clamps. And these are available at any local quilting store to secure this in place. I might place additional clamps in between to make sure I'm getting a very good contact with my fabric and my glue. Now we're just gonna wait until this dries. And while we do that, we'll do the same thing with the paper. The fabric tack will work on paper as well. I do prefer using a scrapbooking dry glue that comes in a tape form. So you are sure not to have any glue coming to the front of your project. Now that we have the flap folded down and glued in place, we're going to just squeeze the edges of our box and pop in those end pieces. I like to do it with the flap on the back, push this one in first, and then this one goes right over the top. That way all of your open edges, your raw edges, are towards the back where the flap is. Makes a nice looking front to your box. Just check your score lines and make sure that you're folded right on those score lines. Now we're gonna do the other side. Again, the flap is here, so we'll turn in that curve first, followed by the opposite curve. And we're going to make sure we're right on that fold line, creasing it with our fingertips as we go. And there you have it. We have our paper box. And we also have our fabric box. 
I will wait for this one to dry a little bit longer, or let's just test it and see if we can pop in our ends right now. It looks pretty good. Thanks for joining me to make your very own pillow boxes using our Leaves Galore tools. I hope you'll have fun making pillow boxes for any occasion, both for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, as well as for Christmas. And um, today we made the four inch pillow box using our large Leaf Galore tool, but you can experiment with all the different sizes that you see here using the full set of our Leaf Galore tools. These tools and the instructions to make this size pillow box are on our website, suepellindesigns.com. I hope we'll see you there.